Hello. My name is Judah Sakinen, and today I'm going to talk about Henry Lefebvre's The Production of Space. This is going to be a ridiculously simplified summary. Okay. Henry Lefebvre was a French Marxist philosopher and sociologist. In this work, The Production of Space, he starts by explaining that space is indiscernible. The only way to know or observe space is by observing the thing in it. That thing which occupies the space is a body. This body is observable and discernible. The problem with this is, what happens to a space without a body? Well, according to Lefebvre, that's impossible. Space and body are intrinsically linked. In other words, where there is a body, there is space. He explains further, saying that although the body produces itself in space, it also produces that space. This is an important point. Bodies define the space they are in. They make it what we perceive. Lefebvre presents the body as something that exists in three realms, those being a perceived realm, a realm of representations, and the lived realm. The perceived realm is the physical world. The realm of representations is the knowledge and the relations between the body and its environment, which includes political, economic, and religious societal structures. The lived realm is the experiences of bodies through time. He says that we must remember that space is not a container. He explains it like this. Through displacement outwards from the center, the body of the thinking and acting subject is replaced by a social object, such as a chief's hut, a pool, or, later, a temple or church. The body can extend itself into material objects like a building or a sign, which then represent the body and occupy that space. We can call these extensions monuments. Monuments are some of the best producers of space, because they are made larger and more significant than human bodies. For this reason, monuments are powerful space occupiers. What counts as a monument is very vague. Lefebvre says almost anything can be an extension of a body as long as it is observable. He specifically looks at the senses as a kind of litmus test of these monuments. I mentioned at the beginning that Lefebvre was a Marxist. This comes into play when he speaks to monuments. Lefebvre argues, monumentality, for instance, always embodies and imposes a clearly intelligible message. It says what it wishes to say, yet it hides a good deal more, that being political, military, and ultimately fascist in character. Monumental buildings mask the will to power and the arbitrariness of power beneath signs and surface which claim to express collective will and collective thought. I'll break this down with an example. The national anthem has a pretty obvious message. America is strong and free. It literally states this. But it also has hidden meanings which are political, militaristic, and ultimately fascist in character. The anthem also masks the will to power, an idea coined by Friedrich Nietzsche. It seems as if the anthem is a passive thing. It seems as if the listeners and singers are using our collective will and thought to endorse the song. According to Lefebvre, this is a lie. The song is using the will to power upon us. It is this sense of our own agency which protects the anthem from our disgust and revolution. This sense of agency is important to us because monuments provide members with a visceral identity. Throughout this book, he asserts that space is used by capitalists to keep the proletariat in check, but it can also be used by revolutionaries to usurp the bourgeois. I hope this helps you understand Henry Lefebvre more. Have a good day.